it has become clear that global infectious disease threat is real and something we have to worry about. Today, infectious diseases are the leading cause of death worldwide and the third leading cause of death in the United States. Now, the diseases that predominate, we all know about and have heard about. Of course, they include HIV AIDS, they include acute lower respiratory infections, diarrheal diseases, tuberculosis, malaria. But since 1973, at least 29 previously unknown diseases have emerged. Now, 20 diseases have reemerged in new places where they never were before and are sitting in new ecosystems. And the question, of course, is why is this happening? Where do new diseases come from? Why are we facing such an escalation? And in point of fact, this is due to the very dramatic changes in the society and in the environment in which we live. Uh, there's been an explosion population growth spreading poverty, global warming, and urban migration. And what we're finding is new pathogens in, uh, in new places and old pathogens in new places. And what do we mean by how is this happening? So if we have urban migration, which means we're moving into our forests, a typical disease that is now blooming all over the place is Lyme disease carried by a tick, and that was due to deforestation to make way for new homes. And this causes a tick bite that's carrying this bacterial infection is quite devastating. Another, of course, that we all know about is HIV, HIV AIDS, uh, that has, uh, is growing and spreading in all urban populations. Another interesting one is called hantavirus. This virus was unknown, it's new to us, and it appears in the American Far West, in Utah and Arizona. It's carried by mice and rats. This is a very nasty virus with a 60% kill rate, and we're still trying to understand it. Another one that's coming out of the forests in Africa is uh, a, caused by a virus, and it's Ebola. Uh, and that is a very difficult virus to deal with. Now. Uh, we have the, uh, also the different kinds of changes in our environment. For example, mad cow disease, which you've all read about and heard about, uh, which is caused not by a bacterium, not by a virus, but by a protein that changes conformation and goes into a state that causes a very severe neurological brain defect. And why did this somehow get out of the box? And if you remember, in England several years ago, there was a, uh, just an outbreak of mad cow disease. And it turned out to be due to the fact that the production of the foodstuffs that we feed all of our livestock was made differently. We were feeding them various kinds of vegetable, mineral, and animal refuse. And this time, they would include the nervous structure, the brains and the nerves. And that's where these prions were. And then it wasn't until the mandate came down to change the preparation of food for our livestock that this epidemic was dropped down. And this had to be changed worldwide. So this is another example of us trying to survive in large populations and feed everybody by changing the way in which we carry out what we do. The other thing that's happened is that there's been a resurgence of very drug-resistant tuberculosis. And in South Africa now, there are strains of, of, the, of the bacillus that causes tuberculosis that are resistant to every known antibiotic, and it's a particularly virulent strain with a very high kill rate. So the crowding, urban mixing of people and pathogens has given us a bloom of, uh, of bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics. Now, we also know that we have international travel everywhere. It's increased. If we have a disease outbreak in Kuala Lumpur, in a day, 
the person who gets on that airplane with an infectious disease can be in Chicago in that same day. So that we are rapidly moving all over this globe and there is an incredibly rapid spread of disease reminding us that no country is an island and we now live in a global village, which means that all the countries on this globe have to now coordinate, collaborate, and help one another to identify diseases and to disseminate things that will help squash down an outbreak of some kind. Now, uh, one other thing that happens when this guy picks up a disease in Kuala Lumpur and winds up in Chicago, now the people in Kuala Lumpur may have been living with this disease for a little while and they've built up immunity, but the people in Chicago have no immunity to this, and so it's a bigger problem. Now, the part of this that's difficult is that we have asymptomatic travel. You get on a plane and you feel fine, but in fact you're infected. And one of the big problems with a possible influenza epidemic is if you catch a flu bug, influenza, you are asymptomatic for at least two days. And during that period of time, you are infectious. So you don't know what you're transferring. And that is what leads you to pandemic. Now, another problem, of course, is the loss of control of our natural, of our national borders. And we're really not very good at carrying out our quarantine laws. It's difficult to do this. And we are going to return to this later in my talk, because in many diseases, effective quarantine laws are the only thing that we're going to use to protect ourselves. Now, every one of these issues is something that is being uh, worked on and understood by many countries coordinated by the World Health Organization. The final issue that is almost making where we live now a perfect storm is that while we have increased globalization, while we have increased population, while we have increased urbanization and the migration of pathogens into new ecological niches, we have the rise of antibiotic-resistant pathogens.